Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we added in the camera control which is great because now the camera follows along with our character. It gives us our free parallax and I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the last episode. Uh, with our camera movement if you guys take a look at how your camera's moving now and how your character's moving you're going to see you got yourself the free parallax that I promised. So that's all looking really good. In today's episode, and actually over the next few episodes, we're going to be taking a look at the first uh, enemy. In fact, what we're going to start off with is a simple enemy. We're going to start off with some kind of obstacle. Uh, and I'm going to treat all of the enemies pretty much the same. Some of the enemies will have additional information. Some of them will have things like uh, uh, some kind of uh, simple AI. Uh, some of them will shoot and things like that. But for the most part, these, these enemies are going to have a very, very similar structure to them. All right. So today we're going to start with a very simple obstacle that can damage our character. All right. So let's get started. All right, everyone, the next few episodes are, there's a lot to see and do in the next few episodes, so I'm going to break it up into, into smaller sections for certain. Uh, in this first section, what I'd like to do is just simply create the asset. We're going to simply create uh, an obstacle. Uh, it's not going to have any of the code to affect the character yet. The character's not going to have any of the code to affect the obstacle yet. All I want to do is actually make the asset so we can start we can start using it. Because uh, I think this is going to take us a number, especially because there's a lot of code uh, that needs to go in this to be able to operate properly. Not a lot, but there's some code. So uh, if you are building your own, great. If not, uh, and you're following along with me and you're using my assets, uh, go to the sprites folder. And we're going to build the spiky rock. I ultimately build uh, two obstacles. I build a spiky rock and spikes. They're going to both be done exactly the same. All right, so once you've done one, you can do a second one. In fact, you can do as many as you want. Uh, there'll be some considerations that we'll discuss as we move along, uh, but otherwise you'll build as many obstacles as you desire afterwards, okay? And this is just one method of doing it, guys. There's probably dozens. There's probably a million ways of doing this. This is the way that I'm going to use, and, and this is how I'm going to do it, all right? So I'm going to build a spiky rock to start off with, Go in your sprites folder and simply drag it and drop it onto your hierarchy. Once again, we're going to get our image, uh, our, our object show up. Let's move it over here for now. With a transform node and a sprite renderer. Sprite renderer, once again, allows us to see the object. And of course, the transform node allows us to manipulate the location of this object. All right. So, so far, so good. Right now, this is just another graphic, just like the rocket. Just like the rocket, nothing else about it. So, there's a couple things that we want to happen. We want this object to first stop the character. Uh, we want it to be an actual obstacle that the character has to jump over or blow up or something to get around it. And we also want this spiky rock to do damage to our character. All right, so the character should damage the rock, maybe, uh, or uh, or not, or have to jump over it in some way. Uh, and the and the rock itself should damage the character. So the first thing we know we have to do. This is the first thing we know we have to do. We have to add a component. And we want to add a 2D physics component. And I think I'm going to use a, oh, I forgot to turn off steam. Great. Anyway, we're going to add a collider. All right. And this collider is going to be the one uh, that affects the character. So if the character moves within this radius, uh, it's somewhere in here, inside this diameter, inside of this area, uh, then we want the character to take damage. Okay. That's the first thing. Now, we know, uh, first of all, that if I just left it like this, the character can't walk through it. It was like our heart. We had a heart up there before. I've gotten rid of it now. We had the heart up there, uh, and the heart prevented us from walking through, but we could shoot it. Oh, I wish I'd turned that off. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, reduce this radius slightly because it's a little bit too big for me. I want the character to be able to walk in here and, and walk in a little ways and take damage. So I don't want them to do it as soon as they get really close. I don't want them to be outside of the area. Uh, in order to be able to to actually uh, take damage. So I'm going to reduce the radius a little tiny bit. You can use whatever type of collider um, fits your obstacle best. If you've got a box, for example, then use a box collider. Uh, in my case, this is a, a roundish kind of thing, so I'm going to use a, a circle uh, collider. All right. A couple things to think about, first of all. We've already talked about how the colliders can affect each other. We've already talked about when we took a look at the, when we took a look at the projectile, the different option we have between either being a trigger or not a trigger. In this case, I want this object to be a trigger. This collider is a trigger. And I want it to be like that because uh, 
they're going to give me three opportunities to affect this character. Whenever our character walks into this circle, I either have upon immediate collision of the collider that's on the character and here, upon upon staying within uh, this triggered uh, collider, and upon exiting the triggered collider. So three opportunities to affect our character. There's one caveat that I forgot to mention previously. In order for those trigger events to actually occur, one of the two game objects that are colliding must have a rigid body. Okay, There must be a rigid body associated with one of those two, at least one of those two. In our case, our character has a rigid body. He's a, he's a physics object. And our projectile also has a rigid body. So in both cases, we are fine. We're going to be able to affect this object. All right, That's the first thing. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the order, if I drag this down, we take a look. Right now, it's over top of our ground. Um, and I don't want it to be. Uh, I want it to be uh, in the negative two position, I think, because I think our ground, let me just make sure our ground was, oh no, that's, my, that's our mid ground. Our ground, short platform, was negative one. All right, so this is negative one. Uh, we'll put our rocks behind that uh, being at negative two. I could have also done it by giving this thing here a slight uh, minus um, decimal two. Uh, that would also put it in behind. Perfect. All right. Anyway, I'm going to do that, put it in behind like that. And that's also going to allow my explosion to be on top. So I'm going to do it like that. The last thing I want to do is I want to change my default layer. Now, remember, guys, we had this thing set up so that the default layer uh, could be um, either shootable or not. So if I leave it like this right now and I say play, when I shoot, my thing goes right through. All right. It's going right through. No good. We don't want that at all. We actually want this object to be able to be shot. So I'm going to put it on the shootable layer. And in doing so now, play, we can shoot our object. Perfect. Very, very good. All right. Now, there's a few other things uh, that I want to do. Right now, let's hit play again. I can walk through this object. See? I can just simply walk through it. And I don't want that to be the case. I want, I want our player to um, be stopped. This is an obstacle, and I want them to have to deal with it in some way. So I either want them to have to jump over it, or shoot it, or something, all right? So what I want to do is I want to add a second collider. And I'm going to do that by adding an entirely new object. And that way I can actually have uh, different scripts on different things, depending on what I want to happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select my spiky rock. And I'm going to say, Create Empty uh, Child. All right, in doing so, I end up with an empty child underneath it. I'm going to change the name right away to, let's say, Rock surface. Great. That's giving me a new movable object within this within this object. All right? Within the top platform. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say add component and once again I'm going to add a 2D physics. And I'm going to add a another circle collider. All right? And and the default like that is just fine. It's not a trigger. I don't want it to be a trigger. Now, if I take a look at this, and let me move it down like this. Let's say I like it like that. Let's say I like it like this. Now, when I say play, my character is going to be able to hit that object and not move. All right, he's actually hitting that now. He's actually walking within. Let's turn off maximize on play so you can see it. Um, he is actually walking within the first collider and being affected by the second collider. All right, he has to, in some way, jump over it. All right, jump over it or something to be able to deal with it. All right, uh, let's immediately change this thing here, our rock surface to be it's currently it's currently shootable because it's it's a child of this it automatically took on that that layers uh that layers functionality i'm going to change this to be ground all right which means now when i hit play if i jump and i land on top of it my character lands all right he's landing on top of it he can continue to take damage all right he's now inside of that inside of that additional uh inside of that additional uh, collider all right, so that's how I want this thing to work. That's great. There's only one more idea that I want to go across in this video, and that is the concept of physics materials. Now, physics materials can be added to any object with a collider. And basically what it allows you to do is, is have some kind of interaction without code uh, between two colliders. All right, so let's take a look what that means. If I take a look at my rock surface down here, uh, or any of them for that matter, anything you want, um, anything with a collider, you'll have something that says material. 
all right, under the collider itself, is something that says material. In our case, it says uh, physics material 2D, none. And that's what it's currently set to. And we want to change it. We want to change it so that when the character um, hits this or jumps on it or anything like that, interacts with it uh, with a smaller one, um, he's going to slide off. Okay, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to set up a slippery, something with no friction, a slippery physics material. Easy to do. Easy, easy, easy. Go to your materials. If you're using the same kind of setup I am, go to your materials. And I want you to say create and look for physics 2D material. Uh, and rename it. Let's rename it to slippery. All right. If we take a look at our new slippery right here in the ins uh, inspector, it's got zero bounciness. Perfect. And I want to set it up to zero uh, friction. I don't think you can set this to negative friction. That would be awesome if you could. Negative one. No, you can't. Okay, so as low as you can go is zero. So this has zero friction. So this is a frictionless surface. All right, perfect. And that's what we want. That's going to cause when these two objects come together, these two colliders come together, the slippery one is going to is going to make the other one slide off. That's basically how this is going to work. So let's take a look at it now. Let's see what happens. Oh, first I have to apply it. Rock surface, none material. Right click the little tiny circle right there. Go to your assets. Find your slippery, and there we go. Now, when I say play, and my character jumps on top, boop, you see how he slides off? Let me see if I can get him to land. There, see him sliding off? That character's just kind of sliding off now, just like that. That is what a slippery material does. It is still shootable, perfect. Everything's looking awesome. So guys, I think I'm gonna end this episode here. It's not a very long one, pretty short, 10 minutes maybe. <laughs> But I don't want to give you guys too much information all at once, and, and I think there's a lot of code to do in the next exercise, in the next video. Uh, so I think we're going to call it right there. All right, that is the structure you need. Uh, we, we're going to add a few more things later on, but that's the basic structure you need to create an to create an obstacle of some kind or an enemy of some kind, for that matter. Uh, what we're going to do next in the next episode is write the code. I'm not sure all of it. We're going to see how long it takes. We're going to write the code uh, to be able to have this object affect our character. I don't want to give it to you guys all in one episode. If I did, this would be a 45 minute to an hour episode, and I don't want that. Uh, I found in the other tutorials that I've done, in the my tutorials and that kind of thing, that if I make the tutorials longer than about, about 10 minutes or 20 minutes at maximum, uh, people get bored and wandered away after that time. And, and I don't want that. Uh, I want you guys to watch this and learn. So, Guys, we're going to end it right there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. All right, guys, keep your comments coming. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you like and what you don't like. Tell me down in the comments. Any questions you've got, let me know down below as well. All right? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.